Hello, YouTube. This is Dr. Mike Aldafi with Elitsuka Pharmaceutical Development and Commercialization. Now, recently, PsyQ hosted a webinar titled The Use of Long-Acting Injectable Antipsychotics for the Treatment of Bipolar 1 Disorder. Relevant Questions from Providers. Now, during the discussion, our speakers discussed first the challenges of long-term treatment and the importance of management options for patients living with bipolar 1 disorder. Two, we discussed the pros and the cons of long-acting injectables for patients living with bipolar 1, both from the provider and patient's perspective. And finally, three, we, re we reviewed strategies to aid in shared decision-making between providers and patients when considering long-acting injectable treatments for patients with bipolar 1. Now, this presentation was sponsored by Otsuka Pharmaceutical Development and Commercialization Incorporated, OPDC, and Lundbeck LLC, both committed supporters of the mental health treatment community. Now, speakers are consultants to OPDC, and I'm an employee of OPDC. Now, let's look at a few clips from the webinar. So finding long-acting treatments in some ways has been a holy grail uh, well, in all of psychiatry, um, but in particular, I think, in mood disorders. We, have a, we inherit the heritage from schizophrenia of first-generation antipsychotic long-acting decanoate formulations, which came with a certain... Um, perception that these are drugs that are, that are used in patients who are more severely ill, chronically ill, and non-adherent to treatment. Um, and, and I think that carryover effect has tainted some of our perspective and perception of what could newer generation long-acting treatments do. Because let's not forget, one of our goals is to prevent relapse. And one of the biggest advantages of long-acting injectable antipsychotics is they go a long way toward reducing non-adherence. Um, you know the patient is getting treated and you know the medication is being absorbed and you know the medication's efficacy can be judged without contamination for have you missed any doses. Um, when I supervise colleagues or residents or am hearing about relapses, I, I always have to say the very first question, is the patient taking their medicines the way they're prescribed? And before a, a trainee or a colleague starts to say, well, they were on drug X, but now I think I'll switch to drug Y, or maybe I'll combine this with this, it will slow down. How do you know? How do you, they say, yes, the patient's adherent. Second question, how do you know? Answer, they said so. My question, did you ask? Well, I don't have to ask. I know my patient well enough. And we know that more than half of people with bipolar disorder don't take their medicines as prescribed. We also know that a lot of people with bipolar illness take many medicines. As I said before, extensive polypharmacy sometimes becomes a kind of a, a, an accrual effect from, from just lots of things that get tried. Not, not the least of which is uh, stopping and starting medicines or taking subtherapeutic doses. In fact, uh, the use of uh, LAIs, even if you compare with, kids, with patients with schizophrenia, uh, it's m more widely used in patients with schizophrenia than patients with bipolar. Now, we also need to keep in mind uh, the uh, disadvantages. Uh, and a disadvantage would be a for instance, the first, as, as Dr. Goldberg mentioned, the uh, first generation antipsychotics that uh, studies have shown that they have depressogenic effects. So one needs to, not, one needs to be uh, uh, thoughtful about that. Now, uh, I'm not, not advising that in the first episode, uh, long-acting uh, intramuscular is, is the first choice, not at all. Because as I mentioned before, 10, 15% is a single episode only. So it, it is important to bring it up, but in no way would say right on first episode, you should consider after the second, second episode, for sure, it needs to be brought up. Actually, a very interesting study done in, uh, well, actually it was a, a uh, um, data mining study conducted in Scandinavia showed that uh, the, the difference between early and, and, and this was in patients with schizophrenia, if, if the antipsychotic medication is given once there's been a number of relapses, it doesn't have as much effect as if you give it early on, once the second, third episode. So in terms of the timing, once the, the and, and let's talk again about bipolar disorder, once the patient has had multiple episodes, neuroprogression has, uh, is already there, you can prevent episodes, 
But again, don't wait until there's been multiple episodes. Consider it early on. Uh, thank you for watching our YouTube teaser. And to watch the entire webinar, please click on the link in the description below. Also, be sure to register for upcoming webinars and watch other on-demand webinars while you're there as well. Have a great day.